Because then you can have your principles and eat them too. And if your conscience should get a little rest, if you can always make a speech or write a check for any donation and all is well again. But all the time, you know, down inside, you know that what this represents is a lot more important than any fee there is or any speech or any donation. I only regret that that Robert Sloan that didn't care so damn much about practical realities isn't around anymore. He's the lawyer I need. Level with me. Was he telling the truth? Have I bought myself off with fat contributions, speeches, nice causes? Have I caught the bug? Am I dying of success? Thanks for not lying to me. Claire. Yes, Mr. Self. Tell David to stop corkering at the elevator. Chase him down the block if he has to, but bring him back here. Yes, sir. I've got News International on line four. They insist on speaking to you directly. All right. <laughs> Dennis, is there anything Bendix knows about you, about your past, that I don't? Certainly not. Because if there is anything, and I know about it now, I can fight it. But if I'm taken by surprise... Do you think I lied to you? After this, I have a right to question everything. What do you mean? Bendix's answer to our complaint. Looks like a legal answer, reads like a legal answer, but suddenly it isn't an answer at all. It's an attack. A new attack with new charges. Defendant further alleges that plaintiff has, on a number of occasions, wenched about in public with a certain unidentified woman without regard for public morals or the immediate presence of other persons, including minors. He don't believe that. He's out of his mind. From the safety of a highly protected place, plaintiff watched as wave after wave of young Allied soldiers went to their bloody death. Right. Plaintiff used his position as a journalist of great prominence to influence American public opinion in favor of communist Russia. How can the law let a man tell such lies about another man and call it a legal document? How? Just wait until you're confronted with Section 338 if you want to know how a man can lie about another man legally. 338? Sorry to interrupt, Bob, but I've got something here I thought you ought to know about right away. Boyd Bendix's column today makes interesting reading. Dennis Corcoran, Jim Baldwin, one of our partners. Mr. Corcoran? Corcoran went to Russia and used his position as a journalist of great prominence to influence American public opinion in favor of communist Russia, et cetera, et cetera. I've practiced law a long time, but this is the dirtiest. Let me show you what they've done. They're real cute. They've set this forth in their answer first to get legal privilege. Then Bendix reprints it in here in his column. A newspaper can reprint any legal document with complete immunity. We've done business with Paul Cleary before. Does this strike you as Cleary or any ethical lawyer? Bendix. He's running this defense because he's their prize columnist. News International is letting him run it. So, Bendix wants to play lawyer, does he? Okay. Two things. First, your friend, your editor. Fred Alston. Did you get his statement? No, he's been busy up Well, now. get it. Keep after it. Remember what I told you? If we prove this whole case but can't prove damages, we can wind up with six cents. So get Alston's statement. Second, Think of something particularly insulting and truthful to say in public or in print about Boyd Bendix. It won't be too difficult. Something strong enough to provoke him into counterclaiming, into suing you. A little insurance, just in case. Bob, I'd like a minute. You can spare it. Sure, Jim. Any excuses? I got a call from Pete Farrell at Metropolitan Construction about this. What would he call? A Bendix column's like an insurance company contract. You have to read it all the way through. Now listen to his last line. However I feel about Dennis Corcoran, I say thank God for the American system of justice that allows him to be represented by the same firm of lawyers that represents some of the largest corporations in our country. <laughs> Hooray for the American system, as long as you don't try to make it work, huh? That's not what Pete Farrell called to say. Bob, this article will appear today in Washington, Chicago, Boston, Detroit. Every other city where we have important clients. Listen, Bob, even at best, this isn't the strongest case in the world. If they're allowed to silence Corcoran today, tomorrow it's someone else, the day after the whole country. One thing's certain. News International, Cleary, they're not scared. 
Else they wouldn't be giving Bendix his head. Bad news? Dennis. If Bendix is going to be running this case, I want to know him inside and out. What he likes, hates, fears, loves, everything. The strange thing is, he was actually a good Joe when we covered ball games together. Before he became a celebrity, he was just one of the boys. One of the best damn newspapermen around. He'd hang out with us, do his share of drinking. And wenching about, the phrase he used about you? No, sir. Rigid. Firm, puritanical, above suspicion or criticism. My father used to say, Jews are a perverse people. We go to synagogue on Yom Kippur to square our accounts with God. But do we recite our virtues? No, only our faults. Why? Because a man's testimony about his own virtue is always suspect. But more important, because it's indecent for a man not to have some faults. Else he'd be competing with God. So your friend Bendix competes with God, does he? I'll say this for him. He's sincere. Whatever makes his wheels spin the way they do sometimes, Ben really believes in what he does. My friend. <laughs> You're going to have to start cultivating a new habit from now on, the habit of not calling him Ben. Well, I've always called him Ben. He's the most dangerous enemy you have. Never forget it, so no more Ben. Okay. Ab, what's our first date? May 25, three weeks. Three weeks till we get Bendix here for the examination. Start at the beginning and tell me everything you know about Boyd Bendix. Puritan. If your client doesn't show up for this examination, I'll move to declare him in default. He called. Said he might be a few minutes late. On a matter having to do with this case. Uh -huh. I beg your pardon, I was told to come right in. Paul? Ben, this is Robert Sloan. Sloan. Yes, I recognize you from your pictures in the press. Mr. Bendix, it is my duty to warn you that an examination before trial is as much a proceeding in law as a courtroom trial itself. Is that any reason not to shake hands? Swear him in, Claire. Am I doing this right, Claire? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, so help, help me, God. God. Mr. Bendix, do you mind if I stand? Well, there's really no legal reason why I can't, is there? All right, Mr. Cleary. Now, sir, you are Boyd Bendix, columnist for and co-defendant in this action with News International. The same. Mr. Bendix, I show you a copy of a newspaper column, and I ask you to identify it for us. Yes, this is my column of today's date. Did you, when you wrote this column, know that under court order you would be required to appear here today for an examination before trial? If you're asking me if I wrote this in anger at being forced to attend this legal hog sticking, the answer is no. But if you're asking me if this was written to prove that no one, no lawyer, no judge, no court can silence Boyd Bendix by any order or threat, the answer is yes. I wrote this with this examination in mind. He does not mean to be argumentative, Bob. That's just his for style. Me, we may as well have this out right now. There's not likely to be a second chance. Mr. Bendix, let's get one thing straight. You will appear every time and at every place the court says you should till we have the information we need. I wouldn't be too sure of that. I read to you from your column of today's date. The same Dennis Corcoran who disported himself in the nude in the presence of others performed sexual vulgarities of all sorts.
was a spectator of debauchery in which partners of different colors engaged in drunken orgies which would make Nero a neophyte at nudity by comparison. Do I read it correctly? The part about Nero, read it again. Would make Nero a neophyte at nudity by comparison. Ah, yes. That's precisely the way I read it the first time. Such a good phrase, I wanted to hear it again. Now, where and on what specific occasions did these alleged orgies take place? In the home, on the grounds, and the lake of the estate of one Elliot Andrews. Elliot Andrews being the writer, columnist, personality. Radical, communist, race defiling, whiskey sucking, food stuffing slob, yes. I call your attention to the fact that you are characterizing a dead man and a one time friend of yours. You don't call it to my attention. You say it so the stenographer will get it done and it will come to the attention of others. Now, you say that um, Elliot Andrews and his wife allowed such conduct, even though they had young children of their own living in the house? Andrews was one of those free thinkers. You want to teach your children about sex, just let them watch. These days, that's considered progressive. Kentucky Mountaineers have been doing it for years. Bob, off the record. I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to my client for a moment, privately. All right. Do you want to approach the subject of his friendship? I'd advise you to The way this examination was going, I knew there was something strange. I think you're entitled to know what it's it is. Ben, this time, take my advice. Still off the record, Bob? This case has been settled. What'd you say? Settled. And on a very logical basis. Henceforth, neither plaintiff nor defendant will ever again refer to or write about one another in public, and the suit will be dropped. Well, this morning I received a phone call from Mrs. Corcoran. She asked to see me. I don't believe you, Bendix. You think you're just about the smartest lawyer around, don't you, Sloan? with your transparent strategy. Get Bendix to sue. Get Bendix's character an issue, too, right? Well, we saw through it, and still we counterclaimed. Why? Because Bendix has nothing to hide. You were for backing off, rolling with the punch. For my sake? No. For News International. Well, a corporation may not have any pride, but I have. To. Ben, And please. now we got this damn thing settled, thanks to me. You know, I'm really sorry this isn't going to trial. I've been itching to get into that courtroom against you, against Corcoran. To unmask him as part of that soft, fashionable elite of the intellect that would undermine this country with Freud on the one hand and Marx on the other. Don't tell me I know. He's not a card-carrying communist, which is exactly what makes him so dangerous. He does their work without carrying their mark. Same kind of treachery we find in the old book when the patriarch Isaac, one of your co-religionists, I believe. Maybe even a blood relative. Dennis? Bob. Get this bastard out of here. Denny? Get him out, Bob! Dennis! Your wife has more sense than you, Denny. She knows when to quit. I'm happy to let you off the hook. Get your client out of here. This examination ben, is over. Come on. She came to me, Denny, pleading to call her off. Paul! Paul! Would you excuse us a moment, please? Thank you. I'm sorry, Bob. I know I shouldn't have done it. Did you know she was going to see him? No, I didn't know. I, came I did home. it on my own. But I couldn't help it once I saw that letter this morning. Canceling another of my speaking engagements? Dennis was still asleep.